the jeweler's life we've got a special treat literally royalty in the house today for this episode So we're going to be talking about what's considered one of the classiest sports watches in the history of the world. And that's right, you're seeing it. It's a Patek Philippe Aquanaut 5167A. Like I said, considered one of those classiest, sportiest watches of all time. We've seen celebrities such as Paul McCartney, Tom Holland, Sylvester Stallone, The Weeknd rock this watch or variations of it. So again, this is the 5167A. This is the stainless version. Uh, just keep in mind, there are plenty of variations. I think there's, I don't know, close to 40 different variations and they have them in rose gold, yellow gold, white gold, stainless, with diamonds, without diamonds, with sapphires. They have a chrono version. Uh, this is pretty much as basic as you can get, but hey, it's still amazing. Still a super difficult watch to get your hands on. Truly a timepiece. So this 5167A has a stainless case with white gold hands and number markers. It is considered one of the thinnest of its kind at eight millimeters. I mean, there are some men's wedding bands that are as wide as this watch. It is incredible. It is probably one of the most comfortable watches that I've ever put on. And this one's mine. I'm not selling it. I can get you guys one like it, but this one's staying here and it's staying on my wrist after this video. So another component of the watch is the band itself. Um, so this uh, Patek calls it the tropical composite band, AKA to me it's black rubber, but it is cool. Um, I like it. I love it. Um, it's again, one of the most comfortable watches that I have ever worn. Um, and it's nice too that it's just so classy and sporty. I'll be honest with you guys, sizing this was very painful. If you guys know, um, this band to replace it, it's about a thousand bucks. Uh, so it's nothing to sneeze at, uh, but you have to cut the band to fit your wrist. Now I made sure to leave a little bit of wiggle room there uh, for Christmas and Thanksgiving, just in case my wrist goes up a little bit. I'm not spending a thousand bucks to make sure this watch stays on. So Patek advertises this tropical composite band as not just salt water resistant, but UV radiation resistant. So what that means is it's meant to be worn at the beach, if you dare. I will not be wearing this at the beach anytime soon. Last thing I want is a shark going through my wrist or this getting lost and some old guy finding this with his metal detector in the sand. <laughs> so one of the things that I absolutely love about this watch is a see-through case back. And uh, what you guys are seeing there, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. The movement itself, you can truly appreciate the craftsmanship, time, and you know just the details that Patek went into designing this watch and designing this movement. So let's talk a little bit about the movement. So it's a, it's a caliber 26-330. It's a self-winding movement. And so it's 30 joules and it has a max 45 hour power reserve. It's got multiple gold components in the movement itself. And for all of you Patek fans, you know that it is a beautiful, beautiful movement. And honestly, one of my favorite parts of the watch just to stare at it running. So because this is the 5167A and it's a newer uh, year model, it does have the upgraded deployment clasp. So I like it. I will say the what is now considered vintage clasp is a little cooler, but this holds up a lot better. And I think honestly, apart from the, the way that the deployment clasp works for this watch, one of my favorite things is to turn my wrist over and to see the Patek seal on it. It is beautiful. The gloss that they did, I mean, the two-tone finishing just with the etching around the edges Patek, you've outdone yourself. I love it. Um, I'm truly like, 
I'm a big Rolex fan, but I'll be honest with you guys, I'm having a hard time not wearing this thing all the time because it's so beautiful. So let's talk a little history about this watch. So as you guys know, the Aquanaut came out after the Nautilus. The Nautilus came out first in the 1970s, and it was actually first inspired to be a military watch, which military officers would be using. Yeah, I know, can you imagine some guy shooting his M16 with a Nautilus on? Um, yeah, a little crazy. So the Aquanaut was inspired by the Nautilus. The original Nautilus was 36 millimeters. Crazy to believe uh, that was in the 70s. Then in the 90s, uh, when the Aquanaut came out, both the Nautilus and the Aquanaut were 38 millimeters, and now we're up to 40. Uh, technically closer to 41, it's a 40.8 millimeter. Um, either way, wears very nice on the wrist. This originally was kind of labeled as a little brother to the Nautilus, and it's become over time more as like the sexy, sporty cousin to the Nautilus. So let's talk pricing. So retail, if you can get your hands on one, and good luck, because we all know how that goes, they retail for $24,750. Now resell on these, just depending, and again, remember when we say resale, we're talking about watches that have sold within the last six months of this specific spec and reference number go anywhere from 50,000 to 70,000. So just depends. Uh, right now, they're kind of averaging about 58 to 60. Um, not letting this go anytime soon, but again, I'm more than happy to get one for you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. We have a couple more surprises when it comes to watches. We're stepping up our game. Keep tuning in because up next, we have a Nautilus moon phase that we're going to do. And apart from that, we've got one of the rarest APs. And if you know what I'm talking about, it's a 1502 BC, the jumbo with a salmon dial, all in 18 karat white gold, an absolute beauty of a watch. We'll have both of those that we will do reviews on and we'll look over. And we're also starting a very exciting program, which we're gonna do a video on, so look out for that.